This is the Chris Mac Show. This is the Big Chris Show. Make girls your private impact show. Hey y'all. It's Chris from Nichols Retirement Empire. Michael Gilchrist sent me a note. Said he wanted to hear about my story with my Chevrolet. How come I don't buy Chevys anymore? So, <laughs> I'm out here walking in my yard, sweating. So, Michael Gilchrist, this is for you. Man, it's hot. Doing my intro there, uh, Michael Gilchrist is another YouTuber. I watch him. He is a funny guy. Uh, if you guys get a chance, check out his channel. Uh, he basically gets out most most of his videos. He gets out and he's walking, doing his exercise in the morning, and just talking about whatever crosses his mind. And he is a funny guy. So, um, Michael Gilchrist. Uh, this one's for you because you asked for me to tell the story about my how come I don't use Chevrolets anymore. Um, well, I got this idea that I was going to save money by getting a, um, a new truck that was, you know, a lot better on gas mileage. Now, I don't drive 50 miles a day to work or anything like that. I mean, I was driving three or four miles. I don't know why I thought, I, I don't know what got in my head, why I thought this. But once I started thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, I could get a smaller truck. This is going to be a whole lot better. And I had a full-size uh, GMC Sierra. It was a really nice truck. And, um, and it was bad on gas, you know. But anyway, I had that nice truck. And um, so I decided, okay, I'm gonna sell this truck. I started looking online and I found a, a Colorado, a Chevy Colorado, and they were they, these were pretty new back then. It's when they first came out with the Colorados. And um, so I saw one and it was a real good price and it was only about three years, two or three years old. And I'm thinking, man, that's just a fantastic price. I need to go look at this truck. So, I drive down to wherever it was, Kennesaw or Atlanta or wherever, and I meet this guy. And so this guy was like, you know, from, he could barely speak English. He looked like he was from Azerbaijan or Croatia or somewhere. And, you know, I, you know, we kind of talked and I'm like, well, you know, he told me he was having to leave the country and he was trying to get rid of it and that kind of thing. So I drove the truck around and it seemed like a pretty good truck. And I had looked on the Carfax and on the Carfax, it said it had been in a wreck. And, you know, so I'm looking at it and it looks brand new. So I'm thinking, well, they've taken it in and gotten it, you know, like you have insurance, you have a wreck, you take it in, they fix it. You know, that's what happens when you have insurance. And everybody in Georgia's got to have insurance. So anyway, I figured this thing had been fixed. Well, I take it to, um, after I buy it, and I bought it. And like I said, it was a really good deal, I thought. And I took it to a Chevrolet place around here where I live and um, got them to look at it. And the guy came back out there and it wasn't very long. <laughs> he came back out there and uh, he said, man, this truck's got all kinds of problems. And I said, well, you know, I mean, I just got it. You know, what kind of issues does it have? And he starts walking around this truck and he's pointing to stuff and he's going, well, that front bumper don't even belong on this truck and this quarter panel is not even attached. It's got one bolt attaching it. And he's like leaning on it and pushing on the front of the truck and it's making all kind of weird noises and, and the shocks are this and the struts are that and it, you know, the frame is bent. And I mean, he just starts naming off all kind of horrible things. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, this truck's terrible. And I'm like, is it even safe to drive? You know, and the guy's like, I don't know if I'd be driving around in that. And I said, well, listen, you know, I said, I've bought it. You know, I said, can you guys, you know, do some work on it, just get it where it's safe, you know, on the road. And he looks at me and he says, no. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he said, well, he goes, it's under warranty. And I'm like, oh, so? And he said, well, it's under warranty. We can't work on it. I'm not, we're not gonna touch that car. Um, because it's been wrecked and you know there's all these things obviously wrong with it so we're, we're not going to work on that car and, and and I wish I was like one of those guys you know one of those old men like on YouTube that man they know how to do everything they know how to fix any kind of car I mean the lawnmower don't work they fix the lawnmower uh, you know the house needs painting they know how I mean they know how to do everything in the world well I don't know how to do everything in the world 
Um, I know a lot of stuff about education because I was a teacher and an administrator, but I don't know how to fix I don't know anything about a car. I mean, I, I'm pitiful. My dad knew all kind of stuff, uh, and I'll just admit to you, I'm sorry, I'm not, I don't know, I have to get my oil changed by other people, and, you know. That seems kind of embarrassing saying that on camera, but but it's true. I don't know anything about cars. Obviously, I don't know anything about cars because I bought that truck off that guy that I couldn't even pronounce his name. And I mean, it, it, uh, that should have been every red flag in the world, you know, when he was saying stuff like moving out of the country and I got to, you know, that should have told me right there, you know, that I was about to get ripped off. Uh, uh, it just dawned on me. Yeah, smart guy. You have been totally ripped off completely and totally for thousands of i mean ripped off. has that ever happened to you have you ever been like completely and just totally just ripped off if you have why don't you leave a comment and make me feel a little bit better about myself because i don't mean like you um you know bought some milk and it was bad when you opened it i don't mean that kind of ripped off i mean Lost your shirt, ripped off. Lost your good truck, ripped off. For a piece of junk that wasn't even safe to drive, ripped off. Lost a truck that was paid for, that drove great, and matched your boat. Matched your bass boat. And then you bought... Oh. I'm just thinking of it now. It makes me, ugh. Everlay. I call everybody I can call. I go, you know, up the ladder, and I get to somebody that works for, um, you know, works for Chevrolet National Headquarters and all this stuff. And I said, look, you know, I've driven Chevrolets. My grandfather drove Chevrolets. My dad drove Chevrolets. I've only driven Chevrolet. I said, every car we've ever had is a Chevrolet. We've never driven anything else. You know, and I said, and I plan on doing that the rest of my life. I said, so... You know, can you like void the warranty or something? And I've said, I'm not trying to, you know, sue you guys or get some kind of advantage. I just want to get my truck worked on so I don't get killed driving down the highway. That's all I don't want to do. And so the guy's like, no, we can't do that. And I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do? He's like, I don't know, but we're not going to, you know, no Chevrolet dealership is going to work on that truck. And uh, I'm like, but I'm sitting here telling you, you can, you know, tear the warranty up. Throw, I mean, I'll sign anything you guys want me to sign. I just want to get my truck worked on by a Chevrolet place, you know, because I'm a Chevrolet guy, you know, whatever. And uh, he just flat out said, no, we're not going to do it. And I said, well, I'll tell you what. I said, everybody in my whole family drives Chevrolets. I said, we will never buy another. We'll never buy another Chevrolet. That's it. I'm never going to buy another Chevrolet. And uh, and I'm not a Ford person. I mean, we got Lincoln, so we got a, you know, MKZ and, a, and an old 1999 Lincoln Town Car. Uh and I mean, you know, I'm not a Ford person. I like that old meme where that old man comes out and goes, when I was a kid, all we had were Fords. So we just walked everywhere we went, you know. <laughs> to me, that's funny. Uh, but anyway, I'm not a Ford guy. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I am now. I'm a Toyota man because they wouldn't work with me. They wouldn't do anything, you know, and I was a lifelong, uh, you know, lifelong you know, supporter uh, of that company. So that's why I don't drive Chevrolets anymore. Now, I still got the old 67 Malibu if you hadn't watched that video. Um, but anyway, if you've watched uh, if you've watched that, check that out. That's a cool car. If you hadn't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and like. Uh, share, you know, share the videos. Uh, if you hadn't watched Michael Gilchrist's channel, watch Michael Gilchrist. He is a funny guy. Uh, I like to watch him. He puts out a video about every day, and they're short. Um, so anyway... Have a good day, Nichols Retirement Empire. And uh, if you're a Chevy person, don't get mad at me. Like I got mad at Chevy when I did that and, and made that statement, but I'm standing by it. And if you're a Ford person, don't get mad at me. And if you're a uh, you know Toyota person, don't get mad at me. If you're a Lincoln person, um, I can see why you're a Lincoln person. I mean, any company that Matthew McConaughey, because he's pretty cool, he's pretty slick. Now, Matthew McConaughey... He's an all right guy. Uh, so if Matthew McConaughey is your spokesperson, I'll buy your car. How about that? Have a good day. Nichols Retirement Empire.